I'm CK. Today we're going to do something different, di very different for me. It's we're going to be building a ribbon microphone. I bought a ribbon microphone kit from Austin Rib Ribbon Microphones. I'll include the link in the description. And it's going to be fun. I've never done anything like this and a ribbon microphone, as you may know, uh, you can do some research on it. You probably will if you want to wa uh, watch this just to get a general sense of why a ribbon microphone is different than a condenser or a dynamic mic. It's got a very thin foil uh, voice coil or voice surface hanging in front of a couple of magnets that actually provide the electrical energy from voice or an instrument into the circuit. Uh, the amplifier or recording circuit that you're working with. The ribbon is of course very delicate and I will probably mess it up a couple of times as I'm doing this just so you know. I can be a little clumsy and a little uh, over anxious when I'm doing uh, putting something together so I'm gonna try and keep that down. Any errors you find as you watch this are gonna be my errors not Austin Ribbon Mike's errors. So this is going to be fun. I, again, I have never built a microphone before, so let's dive in. Let's see what we get in the kit. <clears throat> we get a microphone body and a nice purple brass. Some brass screening to put on the microphone, of course. A nicely machined brass end piece for the mic an XLR connector to put in there. This is the magnet frame to pneumodium magnets and a plastic spacer. A Swedish made transformer to get the signal up to a level that it can be passed on and a bunch of little parts, a wooden dowel, some weather stripping insulation foam, some additional parts to clamp things in place. We'll get into that as we dive in. Uh, screws, a couple of pieces of wire. Not very complicated. The assembly part of the general purpose bits is not the difficult part. We'll come to the difficult part later. Almost forgot about the most important part, which is the foil that we will be cutting to create the ribbon voice coil that goes between the two magnets to create the current that becomes your audio signal. Now, as you can see, this stuff is very delicate. I've already torn a couple of pieces off it, even though uh, Austin Microphone puts a nice big pink sticker that says fragile. I still was a little too rough with it and tore it. However, the amount of material that we're going to be using is not the whole sheet. So the first thing that you do if you have the kit yourself uh, is you put light score marks on the magnet and on the truss uh, to ensure the adhesive adheres them together. Now you also notice, oops, you also notice the magnet is very powerful and will leap up and grab your X-Acto blade. You'll notice there are ends marked on this side. This is the north uh, pole of the magnet is facing up south pole facing down, as you can imagine. So I'm going to make X mark patterns along this magnet face. And I'm going to do the same thing on the truss. Now we want to get the magnet and the truss area clean. So again, the glue wood here, 
So I'm using a little tape to pull any shavings that I may have kicked up off the magnet on both sides. And I'll do the same with the truss. The other thing I'm going to do is get some alcohol and wipe it down with that. Hold on a minute. I will go offline for a minute to get that. Okay, a little alcohol. Next step, we're going to twist these apart. And again, this, these are, they've got about a 30 pound pull on them these magnets, so they're not your best friend when it comes to taking them apart. Okay, so we want to put the spacer between the magnets, roughly, I mean I'm not going to measure this, but it'll be roughly uh, equidistant. and. There we go, grabbed it again. Okay, don't do that, don't fight me. There we go. And as, of course, the magnets are strong enough that, oh, there's no worries about keeping that together. And here's the little bottle of glue. He includes it, which is nice. Again, a good reason to have a kit. Uh, he takes care of the legwork of getting things like this glue. He's also brand, He's also branded it Austin Ribbon. That's always fun. So, I've also raised the truss and the magnet pack uh, up on a piece on a back of a plastic plate. So I don't accidentally stick it to my cutting mat. So what he would like us to do, and I'm gonna do this on my, without the glue on it first. Okay, great. And again, this is, the magnets are so strong, it's easy to do this. They don't fight. Okay. Magnets there. Truss here. Glue here. Now the next step again is to press the truss down over the magnets and there we go. And the little plastic plate I'm using is making cracking noises which is great. And that'll be it for this evening. I was reading ahead in the plans and I realized I hadn't introduced all the parts. Uh, there's also this, which is some uh, acoustic batting that'll go inside to cushion various things. Uh, and I didn't show it to you before because I had thrown it out. I had to go dig in the trash to get it back out because I didn't know it was actually part of the kit. Now I do and I've got it back out of the trash. So the next step is going to be to start adding some electrical components uh, to the magnet holder, the truss. So we're going to put some copper tape here and some copper tape here. Now what we're going to be using here is copper tape uh, and if you haven't used this before you can be a little bit fooled by it. It is tape. Uh, it's a strip, a very thin strip of copper with adhesive on the back. And you might treat it initially just like uh, a piece of scotch tape or a piece of blue tape or whatever. But it's actually metal. And it acts a little bit differently than paper or plastic type tapes. So just be careful with it. Uh, what I found when I've used it to insulate, uh, I mean, sound shield, uh, electrically shield, guitar cavities, 
pickup cavities, for example, is it tends to wrap, wind up, wrap it around itself very easily. So just be careful about that. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting tape here and here. We're going to cut it so it wraps around. Now one thing that's really important is we don't want it to touch the magnets. We don't want any connectivity or conductivity between the copper tape and the magnets. So let me get my various bits and pieces here and I'm gonna press this down around the corner and around that corner to get the sizing. Now as I view it, the sizing doesn't have to be precise. Uh, you have, you know, an eighth of an inch or so to play with. So I'm just going to mark it right there. Then take my Scotch titanium non-stick scissors, which obviously has some metal in ferrous metal in the handle somewhere. Uh, I highly recommend these. They've used lots of different scissors and scissors may seem like something not to worry about much, but they can be really important to get things very precise and very cleanly cut. And I really like these. They're like $12. I bought, bought this pair at a craft and hobby store. So I'm looking at this, making sure I'm all even. Trimming it down a little bit more and brushing that off my mat. Gonna do a little, little test fit here. Yes, that won't hit the magnets there. And on this side, it won't hit the magnets either. Peel the backing material off. One thing I've also found is this, the adhesive they use on these metal tapes is really, really strong. So don't fret about it. I've got to bring this up off the mat so I can see it better. And let me pull the tape, the paper completely off. There. Paper's completely off. I've got my corner bend still pretty good. So I'm going to carefully come in here and slide it right in the center. Pretty much centered. It doesn't have to be exactly centered. This is not uh, critical, but the key thing that is critical is it is firmly adhered. And as you can see, it's not touching the magnets, so that's good. Now I just have to do the other end. I've got a little lump there, but it, it, it doesn't matter. It's just an aesthetic thing that I'm trying to correct. And since nobody's going to see it once the mic is put together, I'm not real sure why I care. So now we have two uh, copper conductive points here, and we're going to be attaching some. Uh, we're going to be attaching the wires that actually uh, do the actual work of picking up the uh, electrical signal from the voice uh, strip oscillating between the two magnets. So that's why these are important because that's what we're going to be soldering everything to. So we've got black wire and red wire. Now I'm going to do the black wire. I'm actually going to do the red wire first. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be soldering the black wire to actually to the back here and then the red wire, as you can see, forms a loop 
around and if you'll notice here you can barely see it in this printout yeah, it's easier to see over here I need to get a new printer someday we're actually going to be stripping a little bit of the wire at the top and soldering that here so we'll have the black wire here the red wire here and, the and give me a sense for how much wire I've got obviously I've got tons and tons of wire so uh, I don't have to worry about being careful with this so if I've got there so I can strip the insulation here and one thing to note this is a little bit easier than it could be because this is uh, solid core wire it is not stranded Stranded wire would be more of a fight. Ah, <laughs> and again. The Numidium magnets are grabbing my tweezers because they're steel. So I got to figure out how to do that better. I'll pull. I'll move the tweeze back further. And I'm going to bend this a little, teeny little bit. Put like a 20 degree bend in it, and then way down the tweezers with my pliers so nothing moves around and I'm gonna turn up my soldering iron a little bit more because I don't want to be on this uh, very much so I'm gonna take it up to 690 degrees Fahrenheit uh, that's but I don't want to have a lot of dwell time oops and that's the other thing I forgot about that uh, my soldering iron is also uh, magnetic, so I've got to weigh down the uh, truss itself so it doesn't do as it just did and leap up in the air at my soldering iron. I could probably use a vise to weigh this down or to get this better, but I'm not going to. Okay. Oh, good flow. Very nice flow. That's a beautiful little solder joint. I love it when the solder flows so well. Great. I like that quite a bit. Okay, let me pull this back off take the tweezers off that's a good you can see it flowed there's no balling so it's not a cold solder joint that my two viewers is a quality solder joint now it's time to do the red wire Now the red wire is a little bit more challenging simply because again we're soldering a gap between two pieces of insulation. So to pin this I'm going to use these locking tweezers and I'll use two pairs of locking tweezers to pin it down and since they're locking I don't have to worry about them fighting uh, the magnet. Okay, so we got to heat up here. Got to put a good bit of solder on this. There we go. Oh, oh, beautiful solder flow. We love it when the solder flows like that. Perfect. Give it a 15 seconds or so to cool off. And let's pull the tweezers off. Let me examine the joint. Oh, yeah, it even. It even overlapped a little bit on the copper 
uh, tape, which is great. A couple of more things to do with this. The first thing we're going to do is put a little bit of the uh, cyan acrylic glue on the copper tape where it meets. Uh, hold on, I may have to unplug this. No, it looks fine. Uh, where the copper tape meets the truss here because, of course, the wire is being held on to the copper tape by the solder. So we'll want to make sure the copper tape can't pull up. And we'll do that to this end down here also. It's nice big globs. Again, nobody's seeing this, but me and my two viewers, so we'll keep the secret to ourselves. We're going to do some final dress on the wires. Again, being very careful not to touch the glue I just put down. The next step is to work on the screens. You can use all kinds of screens for this. The only thing you really care about is you want to make sure the screens are strong enough so you can't easily dent them with a finger because uh, obviously when you put them in the body they're going to be over the top and you're going to be dropping them you're going to be picking up out of the bag uh, or box wherever you're keeping them so you want a good stiff screen again the uh, folks down at Austin ribbon cable in the kit they give this uh, sturdy brass screening which I like and I like the look particularly against the purple so let's see what we're going to do So I do not have a dowel to roll this around. So I'm going to do it slightly differently. Uh, I'm just going to manually curl it gently. The seam that we're making is going to run alongside one of the legs. So that's not going to be visible. So if we're gapped a little bit or overlapping a little bit, I'm not going to be too worried about that. Okay, so that's the way it's going to look. In fact, I'm going to do something kind of wacky, because I'm a wacky guy. I'm going to actually tack solder the top here with it inside the tube. Somebody else might not choose to do that. I think it will be an interesting way to ensure I get the spacing right. Now the next thing is a little bit more challenging for me. Hold on a second, I've got a bunch of brass clippings on my instructions now. Cut out two 1.75 inch for 4.4 centimeter circles. This is going to be for the brass piece that goes over the top. Now the next thing we're going to do is we need to take these two pieces and form them into the end of the microphone tube. Now they again recommend a one inch dowel 
to push on that. I'm going to see if I can think I've got some three quarter PVC that might work. Uh, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now I've got to solder this to that. So put a little rubber band around there. Get my point forty solder. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Got to make sure I can get it into the tube at this point. I may have to grind the solder down a little bit. And there's one point right here that needs to be trimmed. It's always something to trim. Beautiful. Yeah, that'll work. When time comes, that'll work. Okay, so that's the screen. So the next step is the really, 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 really hard part. Uh, which is taking that very thin piece of micron thick aluminum sheeting and making uh, some ribbons. We're going to end part one of CK Builds a Ribbon Mic with this. Tomorrow I'm going to start doing the process of making the actual ribbon diaphragm. So looking forward to doing part two with you. Thanks for watching.